Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here. Uh, this is not a video that I originally intended on making. This is a bit of an unscheduled video, completely unscripted, off the top of my head, so I probably will edit it. These rant videos can go one of two ways. Either it's very good because I'm very passionate and, and clear thoughts on what I'm talking about, or it's very ummy and ari like I used to be. Hopefully it's, it's the prior, not the latter. So the reason I'm making this rant video is just just because I want to get my thoughts out on... I put a poll up on the channel community page concerning uh, how people felt about Admiral Pressman. Now, for those of you who don't recall, Admiral Pressman is the evil admiral from the TNG episode, The Pegasus. So back in the day, him and Riker were on The Pegasus. Riker was like a lowly ensign back then. And it turned out that then Captain Pressman was developing a Federation cloaking device. It was actually a phasing cloaking device, which was which is like a whole arms race unto itself. I won't get into phase cloaks because they're interesting ideas. That's not really the issue. The issue is he broke the Treaty of Algeron. His crew then mutiny against him when they find out what he's done. He and Riker managed to escape the ship and basically leave his crew to die because they don't understand how to operate this contraption that he's knocked together and get the ship stuck in an asteroid, thereby killing the entire crew. Pressman then comes back onto the Enterprise several years later, and they have to recover this piece of technology, and he's keeping very quiet about what it is, but they want to recover it so that the Romulans don't find it, because then the Romulans would know that the Federation broke the Treaty of Algeron, and he doesn't want that to happen. And the whole episode ensues, and you have Riker's divided loyalties. He's not sure who he's loyal to. Uh, you've got Captain Picard Day. That's a nice moment. It's a good solid season seven episode, so I do recommend a rewatch if you haven't recently. Now, maybe it's because the question was quite general. Was Admiral Pressman right? And there's two things, there's two ways in which you can kind of consider it, or even three ways. Was he right to go back and recover the cloaking device? Was he right to create the thing in the first place? And was he right to abandon his crew and his ship when they mutinied against him? So, the thing that is concerning to me, that is deeply concerning to me, is that on this poll, out of nearly 800 people have voted, uh, 63% say yes, he was right. And only 37% say no, he wasn't. Right, okay, so let's get into it. The reason the reason I want to address this specifically is because I just did the... This poll went up after the Tomed incident to Parta, which if you haven't seen, what are you doing with your life? I mean, you should see it. And I, the point of that episode, the, the reason I made that episode was to make it clear why the Federation gave up cloaking devices. Now, a lot of people seem to be comparing seem to compare him to Maxwell. No, I don't think he is the same as Maxwell. Benjamin Maxwell, it's not that he violated the peace treaty because he didn't like it. Maxwell violated it because he thought the Cardassians were acting in bad faith, and he may have been right. Fundamentally, the like we can have a whole separate conversation about Maxwell, may well do that. Fundamentally, the problem with Maxwell is that he did not trust the chain of command. And you can't have someone like that in Starfleet. I mean, it would just be a nightmare. If he goes off half-cocked like that, then imagine what he would do in the Dominion War. He'd get himself and many others probably killed. So that's why you don't bring Maxwell back for the Dominion War. And no, just because he was right in hindsight does not mean that he was right at the time. What he did was still wrong. Again, because he didn't trust the chain of command, which it turned out in episode Chain of Command. Oh, actually, you know, they were actually, they did actually have a plan and actually managed to beat back the Cardassians very easily because, you know, Starfleet Command are not idiots. Anyway, there is that mis now there is that conception that Starfleet Command and the Federation are these pacifistic fools and and a lot of people saying that basically the Federation shouldn't have given up their cloaking devices because, you know, that that was them being the that was them rolling over and it's like no there's very, I think a lot of people were conflating it with the Cardassian Armistice, where basically the Cardassian Armistice, basically the Federation was saying, uh, you can fight us to a draw. If you fight us to a draw and you're more trouble than you're worth, 
well, yeah, we'll concede some territory. Why not? We've got loads. Who cares? Whatever. But that's not what happened with the Treaty of Alderaan. The, that was not, you know, oh, I guess we can, yeah, give you some territory because, you know, you fought us to a standstill. No, the, the Treaty of Alderaan was both sides stepping back and saying, holy shit, we almost, we're, we're on like the verge of actually destroying each other in a war that will be so horrific, neither side wants to contemplate this. Yeah, no, let's let both stop, let's let's calm down, let's work out a way to kind of address or rebalance the situation to a point where we're both comfortable with each other. We're both comfortable, you know, being neighbours while still having a nice neutral zone between the two of us. Okay, this is a comment from one user, Captain Kirk, no, Admiral Kirk. I'm just going to read it out because I think it is interesting. The Federation has every moral right in the universe not only to have a cloaking device, but indeed to impose sanctions on the Romulans that would prevent them from using theirs. But the Federation has committed itself to the opposite policy. However foolishly, it is not Pressman's job to second-guess Starfleet Treaty obligations. Yeah, and he says that you can make a better case for Maxwell. Now, yeah, there's some people saying, oh, well, he was right to try and recover the Pegasus... Uh, you know, to to prevent the treaty from ha you know, pr to prevent the Romulans from finding it. One, because not only does it reveal that they broke the Treaty of Algeron, or specifically he broke the Treaty of Algeron, but also it would then give them a phased cloak, which, I mean, meh, is that really a problem? The, the Romulans are already experimenting with phased cloaks. Those are just kind of a technology that are gonna happen at some point. And the argument that, you know, oh, he's stopping this valuable technology entering enemy hands when, well, A, they're already experimenting with the same thing. It's like, no, that doesn't hold water. What Admiral Pressman is doing here is covering his own arse. That's really all that is going on in Pegasus, is it basically Pressman out to cover his own hide. Nothing more. There's, there's certainly no love of the Federation for it. Yes, down here, crime, uh, crime blogger... 1983. Pressman was right. Just like I have always defended Benjamin Maxwell in The Wounded, he was right, and Picard at the end of the episode admitted to it. He was under orders to preserve the peace like the weak-ass TNG Federation always did, regardless of the consequences. I really dislike how Picard treated Maxwell in the episode, though. He just assumed Maxwell had lost it, and it was personal. Um, well... <laughs> So that, that seems to be a, a, a view, and like I say, with people voting yes, this seems to be the commonly held view. That might be unfair, but certainly if we, if we just address that specifically, like I say, Maxwell is a whole separate thing. I think it's a fundamental misconception to think that, that the reason that the Federation accepted the Treaty of Algeron was because they were, you know, being weak. This is not the 24th century Federation. This is not the golden era you know, this is not the Golden Age Federation which will happily sign disadvantageous peace treaties just for the sake of peace. This is the basically still the motion picture era Federation. This is still basically from Star Trek VI. This is not a Federation that rolls over. <laughs> and I think, I think, you know, conflating those two fundamentally misunderstands a, the change that it happens. Yes, the Treaty of Aldron ultimately does put the Federation on the path to being that more pacifist Federation that is, you know, much more willing to roll over, you know, to to its detriment later on in um, in sort of the Golden Age. But, but you know, the, the reason they're doing that is because they're acting on the lessons of, of the Tomed incident and Aldron where continually being antagonistic or passive-aggressive continued to escalate the situation up until we got to this point where there was nearly universal Armageddon. Now, you know, there are other people who say, so for example, another person said, uh, this is uh, Fu-O, or Fu-Zero, duplicity is a hallmark of Romulan strategy. To abandon that as an asset in conflict against them is absurd especially given that the Federation has never been the squeaky clean moral paragon as so frequently presented. Now, again, 
kind of right, especially with the era of Federation we are talking about. These are not moral paragons necessarily. These are people like Kirk and Sulu. These are people with some baggage and, you know, they're very aware of their own failings and their own prejudices. Although they are quite unapologetic about them. They won't pretend that they don't have these problems. Um, <sighs> this, again, like, some people have pointed out, well, if the Federation of Romulans went to war then the Treaty of Algeron will be null and void anyway, and there would be no reason then to stop the Federation to develop their cloaking device. And that's absolutely right. Probably that would happen very quickly. But the the the, tre the purpose of the Treaty of Algeron is not to disadvantage the Federation in the event of a war. The point of the Treaty of Algeron is to prevent there ever being a war, or significantly decrease the ability for there to be a war, or make it much harder for there to be a war, specifically by creating this asymmetry between the star between Starfleet and the Romulan fleet. You see, the Romulans are going to always be outnumbered. You look at the size of the Federation, and particularly the amount that grows in the 24th century. Federation is a lot, lot bigger than the Romulan Empire, and we can very easily assume that the that Starfleet is bigger than the Romulan Imperial Fleet. Now, partially the Romulans adapt to this by quality versus quantity. They go to those bigger warbirds because they need to make up that, that lack of numbers in building larger, more powerful ships. But they also go for it in terms of using the cloaking device. The cloaking device, as far as the Romulans is concerned, the cloaking device is... It's what gives them a chance. It's, again, and it's, it's sort of, you know... The cloaking device is perceived as a threat by the Federation and, and by Starfleet. It's a dangerous piece of equipment, and it, it, it does give the Romulans that ability to strike if they want to, but it also gives the Romulans an ability. It kind of comes back to when I was talking about strategic maneuver, which is the doctrine the Romulans favor in the 24th century. It also gives the Romulans that opportunity to pull back and it gives the Romulans the safety of being unknown. They can, they can be certain that the Federation don't know what they have, but they can also be certain that they know what the Federation has, or pretty much knows what the Federation has, and that they know that the Federation know that they know, if that makes any sense. Um, so, yeah, there's a, it's basically a balance of power, not by direct parity, but by asymmetry, because, you know, playing, again, playing, trying to play on a symmetrical standpoint is, is necessarily quite escalatory. It will lead to escalation and it will lead to direct competition. So, for example, you say the Cold War, and it's then suddenly all about who can have more nuclear weapons than the other, you know, and because the nuclear weapons are sort of the ultimate uh, tiebreaker, or you could take it further back, take it to um, the sh the naval arms race of the early, well late nineteenth, early twentieth century. And again, it's because it's because you're building up that that sort of direct ability to confront the other, rather than kind of developing your own technology to sort of bypass the other. And you say, okay, well, yeah but we can engage and decline as we see fit. That's kind of, and you know, that kind of to an extent takes the pressure off from a from an escalatory point of view. For example, the Soviet Navy, quite a, well, I don't, I don't recall, you'd have to ask someone, a naval expert, oh, I, I don't, I, can't, I couldn't possibly say who, but that basically the Cold War Soviet Navy, the surface fleet was never that big and the emphasis never really was on the surface fleet. There was no point, and building up a surface fleet would only precipitate a direct arms race with America, which the Soviets would probably lose. It was far more beneficial for them to building submarines instead and make that their main priority. And by doing so, you kind of avoid that direct competition and escalation in that respect. So... With that all being explained as to why the Treaty of Algeron exists and what its purposes are, 
for pressmen to basically decide that, you know, I don't know how people can look at pressmen deciding on his own and saying, I don't like this peace treaty, so I'm going to go and ignore it. Maybe, maybe it's just because that my, a fair chunk of my audience is American and seems to believe that basically any peace treaty that is not favorable to them therefore does not count and is merely a, a reading suggestion. Quite possibly. And that would certainly explain Starfleet conduct in other areas such as the Dominion War. People seem to miss the, the, the idea of the sacredness, no one seems to talk about the sacredness of a peace treaty. That it is a, there, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of old concept of a gentleman's agreement. And that is something that we see prevailing between the Romulans and the Federation throughout the next generation. When they have all these encounters with the Romulans. And for the most part, there is a kind of a... You know, it's not that they're trying. It's not that they aren't trying to outdo the other and aren't trying to threaten the other and and beat the other. They are, but it is done in this in this very gentlemanly, under this under these kind of precepts of sort of you know, honor rules. There is there are certain things that you do and don't do in this game. You know, there are there are certain un unwritten lines, un un invisible lines that are not crossed. And Pressman making a cloaking device absolutely crosses that line. And so, basically, just to conclude, because this is a ramble, in terms of Pressman's conduct, there are at least two elements or more that are criminal. One, his uh, his intentional violation of a bind legally binding Federation treaty. That also speaks a lot to his character, that basically if he disagrees with something... It doesn't apply to him. If he disagrees with the rules, they don't apply to him. So that speaks volumes of his character. It also speaks that he is absolutely perfectly willing to jeopardize other people's lives. Um, you know, by violating the Treaty of Aldron, you may well be precipitating a war. And frankly, it probably won't be you who suffers from it. It will be everyone else and probably the frontier col and, pro and probably all the colonies along the neutral zone that will get fucking glassed. But it won't be you back safe and sound on Starfleet headquarters. And then three, his absolute deliberate willingness and negligence, basically allowing his his crew to die, just leaving his crew to die with the, as they try to undo the contraption which he had put together. Criminal negligence, if not more, and especially for a Starfleet captain that or any kind of captain that is absolutely unacceptable conduct so no i don't think pressman is um is right and and i have serious serious questions for those of you who do really think that he is right given all the case that i have just put out the fact that he's willing to put so many lives in jeopardy simply because he has a personal opinion which you know we're all entitled to our opinions but that doesn't mean that you go off and unilaterally break binding international treaties. I, I I would hope we could all agree to that. So, rant over. Thank you all for watching. Then back to the regular programming. See you all next time.